I decided to run for office last summer. Um, I, what started the idea was in March 2015, I found myself having to buy a, a VIP seat at the auditorium to um, be able to see people's mouth because they weren't mic'd for this particular show. And um, it's not right to charge uh, people for uh, ADA accessible seats. And when I t went to the CAPC to tell them that, you know, you need to refund my money and you can't do this under the law, they told me that they most certainly would. So that began my journey trying to get access to the city to get that change. And in the process, um, I found out how government works in Eureka Springs and I found out how it functions and then the dysfunction. I don't think that uh, it's ever a good solution to tell a constituent to move if they don't like what's going on in Eureka Springs. And um, I, I don't think that uh, we should be made adversaries if we come to your, the city council with a problem. I'm, ho I'm hoping they will set aside their differences and hear you as a person. So um, I've been talking to lawyers about an illegal exaction and what the, exactly that is because of the uh, I and I fee on our water bill. And uh, they suggested to me that it would be cheaper and quicker to get a seat on the council and effect change from the table rather than a long, very long, very expensive lawsuit on behalf of the citizens, even a class action lawsuit. So that's the decision I made. I think it's important to give back to the community. I've been living in Eureka Springs 26 years and um, I really uh, my, I came here with my husband, he was going to law school, and uh, we kind of figured we wouldn't end up staying in Arkansas, that we would advance on to Colorado, and then maybe eventually to Alaska, because I like cold weather. And uh, I fell in love with the people in Eureka Springs, and I also found out that even on my worst day here, I can look around outside and think, oh my gosh, I'm having my worst day here in this incredibly beautiful place. I have lived in Eureka Springs for 43 years. Um, I, when I lived in Texas and was in the insurance business, I certainly served on a lot of boards and committees. Um, it's been a long time because I've been retired for uh, several years. I am currently the uh, state representative for the Democratic Party of Carroll County. I have served on several boards. Uh, I have served and cur currently serve on the CAPC. I served on the Planning Commission. I currently serve on the Mayor's uh, Economic Development Commission uh, and then Civic uh, uh, with the uh, Board of Realtors and, uh, and I was also 20 years as a volunteer fireman. I certainly think that you need to attend city council meetings. And if you can't attend city council meetings because of an access problem, you can certainly watch them on YouTube and they are closed captioned now. Um, I think that uh, I, I found there are council members who um, miss a meeting and don't go back and watch the meeting they missed. And so they come to the table not knowing what happened at the last meeting. Uh, we don't have to do that. We have access now. I think that uh, we need to keep current on city business. I think that you should uh, watch these city council meetings and then walk away from uh, what you just watched and go look it up and verify that what you heard and what they told you is the truth. And um, I think that uh, if you don't understand how something happened, I'm reading city code. And if you, I look through some of the things, how did that happen? You know, go pull the minutes and go dig into it and find out how it happened. Get a sense of history. Because I'll tell you, every issue requires a sense of history to in this town. So um, I think that you need to do all that, but you need to be willing to do some homework away from that table and away from watching the city council meeting. And for Pete's sake, please talk to the people in the streets and find out what their issues are because they're the people who are, that's who it's important in this whole process. There's no power to be had here. It's all about service. 
The only preparations I think uh, really a person needs uh, to run for city council is a willingness to serve. Um, uh, it would be good to attend meetings and become familiar as you can, familiar with the process as you can uh, before taking office, but you kind of fly by the seat of your pants for the first few months anyway, and but you fall into the routine. I was an insurance underwriter for 26 years, and I was a specialty. I specialized in uh, contractual liability, and I also uh, did a stint in a bond uh, insurance agency so that I could understand bonds from start to finish. And I had power of attorney over several bonds by the time I retired. And um, I'm creative. I. I created insurance policies that didn't even exist to cover a risk in a way that would be a cost-saving factor for the client and would uh, also be profitable for the company. And um, I'm fearless when it comes to working on big projects. I wrote premiums for uh, entities that uh, were larger than the Eureka Springs budget. I'm not afraid to take on a big project and I'm fearless for standing up for people. Uh I believe my qualifications uh, are, you know, my past experience on the council, also the CAPC Planning Commission, my involvement there, uh, my uh, 40 plus years as a real estate broker here in Eureka Springs, my uh, interest that I've had in retail as well as food service here in Eureka Springs, affiliations with uh, lodging uh, through other family members here in Eureka Springs and and uh, in, in the business community, so uh, I think that I'm qualified to serve, absolutely. The only property I own in Eureka Springs is right here at the home I live in. Uh, I don't have a second home in a different state, so I'm not splitting my time between here and Eureka Springs. I did decide to curtail traveling so that I can devote the next two years here, it doesn't mean I'm not going to leave town occasionally. I'm just not going to be gone for five weeks at a time anymore. Um, it's my turn to be of service, so that's what we're doing. And I made those changes in my life. But I don't own a business. I don't own a b, &B. I am not worried about the zoning here. I'm living with, in the covenants of where I live. Um, I, I spend my money here, but uh, I don't have any other interest where I make money here. None. Some of the specific areas I hope to address on my agenda, and I hope my agenda is the agenda of the people in the street and the people who live here. Access, access, access. Access to uh, city government. If you've got a problem, you need to be able to bring it to the table. If you're giving your three-minute talk in front of city council, I want to look up. I want to know what your concerns are. I want to hear you. Uh, access to information. We need to get a lot of this information that uh, we're having to FOIA or, or try to get out of City Hall should be on a website. And this is, this is a modern age. We need to be doing business in a modern way. Um, access to physical locations. Our sidewalks are in bad shape. There's constant complaints about parking. And one quarter of the citizens who buy water in this town are not on the sewer system. Yet, they're paying that INI fee as if they were. Um, I also am concerned about the water loss situation between here and Boone County. We need to give Public Works whatever equipment they need to staunch that loss. We're losing, we're on point to lose about $160,000 of water, water that comes to us that we can't bill out because we're losing it. And uh, that's a bond payment. And so we need to get that fixed because that's not gonna stop. Water loss does not stop. It's like playing Jeopardy with a cattle prod. You've got to do something about it. And then other thing is something about the future, you know, um, rather than worrying about anecdotal problems that come up, you know, one person had this problem, one person had that problem. Uh, there's a panel a handler over here and there was dog poop in the street. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about returning this city to its healing roots. Let's talk about a long-term plan. Let's talk about building the infrastructure for that and getting people on the sewers and getting the sidewalks fixed. That's my agenda and I hope it's yours. 
I have no agenda. Okay, the things that I think that we need to address coming up in the next year, let's start with marijuana. We can't wait till it gets here. We need to have plans for it. So that's the thing that I think we need to do right now. I also think that we need to address the crime situation, whether real or perceived. Out on the internet is information that I didn't put there, but it's, I just found it. It's out there and it's telling people we have a, a terrible crime problem here. I, that's not my experience, and I think we need to uh, investigate how that information uh, gets reported, and we need to be able to respond to it in a rational and honest way. If we lose our credibility, no explanation is going to make any difference. Um, the next thing is safety as far as uh, lighting up. The, we can light up the city. There's so many lights out downtown. There's almost 14 of them on one street alone. The trolley stop's got lights that are out, and I think we need to move on that, and also preservation. That's my biggest worry. If we lose the flavor of who we are, it's not going to make any difference whether we have these wonderful old buildings. Winslow has wonderful old buildings and they're dead empty. And Gravit has wonderful old buildings and they're downtown and they're dead empty. And if the people who live in Eureka Springs are not living in these buildings and working in these buildings, we lose the flavor of who we are. We, we become boring. And that's the worst thing that could happen to Eureka Springs. People, you think they come here for the buildings, but without us and the people who work here, it won't be the same. I believe that to be infrastructure times three. Uh, I do support medical marijuana coming to Eureka Springs. For that matter, I, I figure within the next two to four years, we're going to have recreational marijuana. I support it, and I'll tell you why, because I used to be on the fence about this, too. I, I did not know what effect this was going to have. I did some research. I read the Journal of American Medical Association. They said that use does not increase uh, among you, uh, young people. It increases among people between uh, 45 and 67 years of age. Uh, and... I thought that was interesting, but I also read a three-year study by the Department of Finance from Washington State after they legalized it for recreation, and they found that 56% uh, of the people uh, would still vote for it. 37% of them would not, but 77% said that it had been good for the state and it had a positive impact or no impact on their lives. So no, I thought it was good for them. They brought in $82 million in tax revenue. Uh, police spending dropped precipitously. Violent crime dropped drastically and uh, other crime remained about the same. Uh, drug crimes, of course, dropped about 80%. So it's turned out to be good for the states that have it. Now, what do we need to do about it? Um, we travel a lot and we travel on a lot of locations that have marijuana. And what we found is the that uh, they're well lighted, they need security, they're gonna, uh, all of them that we see have big garage bay doors though, that tells me traffic is coming to bring the product in and they, we need good parking so we need to get with planning and find out what they're doing because I understand they've been working on it. Do we want to close to alcohol sales? Where do we want to put it? It's going to need adequate parking. It's going to need adequate, and we need to fix the ordinance because we can't be giving tickets to people who come here to buy it. I support legalized medical marijuana and I see no city involvement in that. I certainly do support the gay community in this town uh, and vocally and uh, physically I'm very active in the gay community. Uh, with my money and my time I worked really hard to get 2223 passed and then once it passed here I went down to Fayetteville and I helped Shannon Hooks work on it down in Fayetteville as well because I believe that, they, that this is ridiculous in this day and age that everyone doesn't have the same rights. Um, I support them with my money for pride and uh, I will always stand up for them. I support all who live here and have businesses here and I don't single out or put anyone, put anyone a uh, person or group in front of another, so, well, you know, why would I?
I can't wait to see who says they've read this book in its entirety besides James DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> I started researching it back, like I said, back in 2015 and digging out so I can find out exactly what the codes and what the law are. But yes, I'm reading my way through it and I promise you by the time I get to the table that I will have read it. It's very interesting to find out that uh, CAPC can pay for parking lots, that uh, the, the hospital ordinance just says the hospital ordinance was created. This, nothing more. Uh, apparently it goes back to some act of the 40s, so I'm going to have to dig that out to find out what happened there. Um, do I think uh, that the codes need to be changed or enforced? I, I don't think 22, 23 is being enforced. We have a business downtown that's performing some weddings. I think that needs to be addressed. This town voted 71% for that law, 2223, and I think that is a mandate for enforcement. Um, codes that I think need to be changed, of marijuana 2131, uh, it needs to be changed because it it uh, promulgates a ticket if you buy marijuana. And I think we need to make some adjustments on that. I think the sidewalk ordinances are not enforced, but that's another problem in its own. Uh, there's a more humane, economically humane way to handle that. And uh, if the city thinks they can't be sued, well, it turns out in Barden v. Sacramento, they got sued. They had the same rules and laws that we had here, and they had the same refusal to enforce them. And the courts held the city at fault for not enforcing them, and they're having to pay for it out of their transit budget for the next 30 years. We need to do something about it. Uh, yes, I've definitely read the code book. That doesn't remember. Really that doesn't mean that I remember it, but uh, I always have one for a reference at home uh, that I can grab a hold of anytime I need it. Someone always has a copy uh, at a meeting, or most generally, we're provided everything we need for that specific meeting anyway. Um, as far as uh, revisions, codes are changed uh, uh, as attitudes change. Uh, and and I believe that for enforcement is critical, absolutely. In five years, I hope to see, I'd like to see Eureka Springs become a, a medical tourist destination, not just for medical marijuana and holistic healing, but we have the most wonderful things here. We have uh, a lot of outdoor sports. We have kayaking and boating and zip lining and the bike trails and the walking trails. Uh, we have a wellness can-do attitude here in Eureka Springs. And I think with the coming of medical marijuana, we can bring people in who are not well and uh, introduce them to our outdoor life and also um, help them get well. I'd like to see Eureka Springs come full circle and bring itself back to its healing roots. And uh, that's how we make our business here, but we can't do that if we don't make this town accessible for people who are disabled. Uh, I see Eureka Springs in five years in a much better position to uh, survive the next 50 to 100 years. You know, again, infrastructure is so key to that uh, with water, sewer, uh, storm drains, um, all of those kind of things, streets, uh, sewer plant, uh, and we're working towards uh, getting the city ready for just that the next 100 years. I'm asking you to vote for me, and I, I, I'm not of the uh, idea that I'm here to win or lose a race. I'm here to offer myself service to you for a while. Uh, I, I look back at uh, the current, my current opponent. He's been in office for eight years, and uh, I, no one sitting on the city council nor the mayor were elected this time. They slid in unopposed or they were appointed, and I think that is absolutely wrong. So I, I am happy to have an opponent. I'm happy to be an opponent to see if we can make some change. I think if you've sat at the table for eight years and you haven't gotten done what you wanted to get done, it's time to move along. And I believe in term limits too. Give me two years and let me see if we can make some changes here because I have new ideas and different ideas and I'm always gonna come down on the side of the citizen. Thank you for listening to me.
Very good. Uh, I think it's critical that, that all who are registered to vote should get out and vote. If you are a an adult inside the city limits of Eureka Springs, then you should get registered to vote. Uh, it, it's our civic duty uh, at its minimum best. And, uh, and I think it's important that to be involved in the process. Okay.